Hey, in this video we are going to see how to deal with the DAT files and how to modify them for an advanced interaction with the Diana interactive environment. Now, uh, this modification of the DAT file is not uh, that necessary as it was before because now we are working in the Diana interactive environment, so the pre and post processing is uh, within the same uh, window. But uh, even uh, it can be useful for a specific uh, task and a specific uh, situations or different models. So first we are going to open uh, the model. I will open the Python that is a linear elastic with the linear elastic material properties. So here we see in the main window and the main panel different options that we have uh, been working with during the last videos. Materials, geometries, loads, supports, everything. So the mesh elements, nodes, element geometries, loads, cases, and so on. So we have everything here. But this is a graphical interpretation of uh, classic uh, code or classic um, finite element description. So if we go to the export model option and we click uh, here, we change the name, for example, beam elastic, we save the same folder. What we are going to get is a DAT file with all this information in different tables. So if we open this file, we have uh, the first table that it's called directions. So here are defined the principal uh, directions of our model, the X, Y and Z directions. And all the, the nodes, uh, the coordinates and the elements are going to be oriented following these main principal directions. So we can change here wherever and for example minus one, minus one. So and then we are changing the orientation of our axis. So then the next table uh, is the coordinates where we have the coordinates of all our uh, nodes. So in total we have 700 nodes and the coordinates are represented in X, Y and Z. So that's the reason that we don't have anything on uh, Z because that's 2D model. And then the, the nodes that has uh, X, uh, Y, it's because corresponded uh, to the reinforcement steel. The second table is the table Mattery. Uh, here we, we can see all the material properties and the material data that uh, we need for our model. And as you can see, all, mater all the materials are uh, named with a specific name. But the important is this number that you can see here that correspond to the number of material. When we are going to assign to the element a specific material, we are going to assign this number. So in total, we have two materials that correspond to the concrete and the steel. And here inside, we can see the different material properties. So as we choose material uh, code 1990, we see the specification for the concrete. So the kind of concrete, uh, the cement type, ambient, and so on. So if we define uh, any parameter, a personalized parameter, like uh, different uh, elasticity or different compressive behavior, so we will see uh, here the different options. And as well for the reinforcement. Then we move to the Geomet, geomet uh, table. This table is meant to uh, contain the different geometrical parameters for the cross-section. We choose the, the, we choose the, re, the regular rectangular cross-section. So 
rectang that corresponds to the rectangular, 0.7 uh, meters and 0.4, and then the geometry for the reinforcement. So you can see the cross section and the kind of reinforcement. So we have reinforcement lines, if you remember, and then we choose rebars. So we didn't choose grid, we choose uh, bars, reinforcement. So if we uh, specify a uh, data as we did for the uh, nonlinear analysis, we would have here a new table that it would uh, name data and then the parameters that we want to include in data. So in our case, it's one corresponds to the numeration name example concrete in tech and then parameter that is synth that corresponds to the integration points so and then select 11 so we can if you want save and then we will see what we create uh, now the next table is the elements so we have different elements sets uh, one for each uh, geometry that we created or uh, yeah, element of the geometry. So we created two left span and right span. So we have two element sets for concrete and each element set contains the different uh, elements. Here, as I said before, we have uh, for these elements the material and the geometry that uh, are uh, that correspond so we have material one and geometry one so if we want to material one we have here concrete and if we want to go to geometry one we have also concrete cross section now for example we can add here data one and then we will refer to this concrete integration point so what do we have uh, just done is assign 11 integration points instead of the, the by default number. So we can put here. Yeah. And then the next table is the reinforcements. Here we can see the different nodes that uh, define the reinforcement. So uh, we have 15 for the for the for the bar number one with the assignation of its material and geometry also, as well as we had for the concrete. In that case, it's two and three. So if we check here, that the bar one correspond to the two V20. So if we, when we see uh, two here, for example, that one, this corresponds to the eight V20 and so on. So you can see we have uh, each uh, load set for its definition of the reinforcement. So in total, we must have a six, three for the top, one, two, three, and three for the bottom, one, two, three. So all each load set, each element set has, uh, has to have the different um, material and geometry definition. Then the next table is loads. Loads, uh, here we have different load cases. We have a uh, load case one with the loads applied uh, nodal loads element loads that correspond to the uh, elements uh, um, distribute uh, uniform distribute loads and then for each load case so for the variable that we define and the permanent so we define two load cases in the case that we have a combination of loads we will see here an extra table with the load combination. You can also modify the different parameters of the, of the combination uh, here in the data file. And lastly, the supports. Here we have the supports that we created on our model. In our case, we created three different supports. Uh, so we have one, one support that is in the, no, in the node that corresponds to the mid uh, span support and as you see we are uh, blocking or supporting the direction one the direction two and the direction three for the other two supports in 
uh, node 2 and 19 we only are uh, supporting the direction 2 and 3 so if we create for if we add here for example 3 like that now the support corresponding to the node 3 is blocked or is supported in the three in the in the three directions okay so there is everything or almost everything in the, that file you can have more tables depending on your uh, properties of, of your model what you created and so on for example if you have tie-ins you should have a new table that it's called something like tie-ins and then the different tie-ins inside but um, in this case we don't have any uh, more tables then we can go to Diana Now we can go to the Diana, Diana and import model so we can import a that file. Then you see we import all the tables that I mentioned before. And here we you see the new data that we created, the number of integration points. And then if we go to supports, uh, for example, uh, here we'll see uh, we have two and three corresponding to X. So we have all the information that we define in the dat file now here translated to the AI interactive environment. The only problem is when we do that, as you can see, you you don't have access to the preprocessor. So you cannot uh, create any new geometries. So you, if you want to perform any modification to the model, you need to go through the that file again or through the interface but applying all the modifications over the, the mesh so not to the geometry in any case it can be uh, useful for some uh, situations to finish with this uh, video we are going to open the that file of the nonlinear analysis that I have it here And see the different the differences between the linear and nonlinear. So the main tables are the same: coordinates, matery. Here in matery we have the the linear elastic materials as before. But then, if you remember, we created nonlinear material properties. So these nonlinear material properties are all of them uh, right down here. Uh, total crack model so the cracking model the tensile uh, behavior or dick if you remember um, the energy fracture different concrete parameters the tensile stress uh, the compressive behavior thorenfeld and then possible modifications of the thorenfeld that case is known for all of them and then the compressive strain so young poison so poison so you have all the options that we uh, assign in the during the model development or the material model development here in the different options so if you want to add something manually you can always or delete or change you can always uh, just modify any parameter that you think that you need to do so also the same for the nonlinear material so we have which kind of material, non-linear material we have. In this case, it's bone misses with bone missiles yielding criteria, so we don't have hardening. And then the yielding stress, that is the parameter that we need for the for the for this uh, yielding uh, behavior. The rest of parameters are the same, but you remember the synthe that we already talked about. about. And then the the load combinations that here if you remember we define some of them so load cases uh, we have the different the five load cases that we created and that we are going to use later on to make the combinations of the load combinations until here with this video thank you very much and see you soon